So this is the seventh lecture and we're going to talk about closure, relative openness, and uh, some introduction of definitions of complex sets. Alright, so first we have a property of closed sets. So let's prove it. If this, the closure is closed. So we want to show that we want to show by definition, if P is limit point of E, E bar, then P is in E bar, right? So if, if P is in E, then P is, is in E union E prime is E bar, and we're done. If P is not an E, since since we know that um, P is in P is a limit point of E bar, right? So any neighborhood, any puncture neighborhood of P intersects. E bar, right? So, which means that, which means that there exists an element x, and this function neighborhood such that x and x x and e or x and e prime, right? So now we do casework. If x is an e, then then we have uh, this country neighborhood around p intersects e. It's not zero. It is not empty, right? If x is in e prime. Right, so basically we have, like we have P here, and then we have a neighborhood here, and we have an X here, and we have X. If X is a limit point of E, then what does that mean? It means that every puncture neighborhood around X intersects the point and E, right? Just think about it. So, so we let let the radius of this neighborhood be the radius. This is the radius of P. This is the radius, right? R minus the distance of P and X. Let this be delta. Be the radius of the neighborhood around X that we're gonna construct. Then. Since x is the limit point of e, then we have to exist in y such that y is in the neighborhood about x intersects e. Well, well, why does y is not equal to p? Why y is not equal to p? Right. Because when we're talking about, like, we're talk like the, the delta ensures that this is not gonna happen, right? So we have R here, and then we have, and then we have this is R. Oh wait, oh no, it's not the delta. We have we can we can we can this we can explain this in another way, right? Why not Y equal to P? Because, because, because this neighborhood is actually has infinite elements. 
since x is a limit point of b prime. This is a property we uh, introduced last, last lecture, right? I don't know, but we proved this. We proved this. Inter infinite intersection if it's a limit point, right? So, now we continue. We have this, right? Also, we have, so we have, then we have, it's a subset of XB. Right? Then we have P as an E prime. Big this Y such that Y is in this puncture neighborhood. Right? So if P is not an E, if P is not an E, if P is not an E, then any puncture neighborhood intersects E. E bar? We have any Inter, uh, any puncture neighborhood ex intersects E bar is not empty, and there exist uh, elements. There exist elements uh, in E such that it intersects the neighborhood. Right. If, so if P is not an E, we have P intersects. Uh, we have P is the limit point of E bar. Right, P is a limit point of E bar, which means that any neighborhood, puncture neighborhood, intersects E bar, right? And we do casework. This element, then we have element in this neighborhood such that it's either an E or it's an E prime. And we show that, and we show that if X is an E, then intersects E is not empty. If x is an e bar, we still have y is in this intersect. So, which means that, like, no matter what, no matter what neighborhood intersects e, the na puncture neighborhood around p intersects e. So, in conclusion, we have p is a limit point of e. Right? So, if, if p is not an e, then we have p is an e bar. Uh, e prime, so we have p is in, which means that p is an e bar, by definition, right, and we're done. Okay, now next. If uh, subset of R is not empty, bounded above, then the supremum is in the closure. Oh wait. Oh, we're only done part A. Oh my God, I'm sorry. We only done part A. Now we're gonna do part B. E E bar. Part B. E if E is equal to E bar, then we know that E is closed by by part A, since this is closed. If E is a closed head, then E is a closed, right? Eh? Yeah. Super simple. And if E closed, then we have all its limit point is an E, which means that E union E prime is equal to E. And this is equal to E bar. Right? So we have so we have E bar is equal to E. Yeah? Okay, part B we're done. Part C. Part C says that like, if F is closed and E is contained in F, then its closure is also contained in F. So, if E contained F, F is closed, then we have E bar contained in F. How do you prove it? So, E is in F, which means that if 
x is 11.8 e, right then every punctured neighborhood around x intersects e which means it also intersects f right so we have right, right if x is an e prime then x is an f prime which means that e prime is a subset of f prime which means that it's a subset of But this is equal to f. Why? Because f is closed. Right? So we have, so we have, and this is also equal to e bar. So we combine, we have e bar is in f. And we're done. Now we go to the next theorem. If a set is not empty, bound above, and the supreme is in the closure. And let's prove it. So let y go to the supremum. Supremum. If y isn't e, then y is in. We're done. But if y is not in e, can the case work? Then by definition, for any H positive, there exists an element in E such that Y minus H This can be reduced to strictly less than because because y is y is not an e right because y is not an e so this could be like this could be like become like strictly then what this means is that this means that any puncture neighborhood around y intersects e. Right, which means that y is the limit point of E. And, and right. So then we know that if if E is closed, E is set to E prime, which means that y is an E. So we do some remark. This is a typo. It should be y is a subset of x. So if e is, and this also be subset. If e is subset of y is subset of x, then if there's a met, if x is a metric space, then y is also a metric space. But e is open and x means that, like you just read it. I'm running out of time. You, you can just read it. You can pause it. And here's a def. Here's an example. If R is a 2D dimension plane and Y is a one dimension plane, then we can see that this circle, this circle, right, this open circle is open in X, but is not open in Y. While this set is open in both X and Y. N and X, not Y. But this set open in both. Yeah. And then now we have a theorem. Is read this. So we're gonna prove it. The basic set if E is open in Y, that means that E is equal to Y intersects some open set in G. So if E is open in Y, it means that for any P and E there exists a radius such that the distance between this in RP and this point is in Y, then we have this point is in E. It's the definition of open and 
Jofen and Y. And now for for each P define define this set equals to all the points in X such that okay and then we define G is equal to union of all such P VPs and now we see that we see that this is a neighborhood neighborhood of P and X and this is a union of neighborhood and neighborhood are open open sets so we have G is open open and X right clear right space here oops what do we have all right I think and then since this since why is it working since for any P and E we have P as in VP, right? P of course in VP. Then we have E as in G intersects Y. Okay, just, right, of course. So look at, and we look at, we take a look at VP. We see that VP intersects Y as a subset of E, right? Is a subset of E. So which means that for all P and E, we have G intersects Y is a subset of E, which means that E is equal to G intersects Y, where G is open in X. And we're done with this direction. I'm gonna prove the converse. So if G is open in X. G equals to G intersects Y. So if P is in E, then P is in G. Right? So there there's a VP in G such that VP intersects Y is a subset of E. Well, Take a look at this expression. This is basically saying that this. If a if an element is in the neighborhood and is also in a Y, then it's an E. If it's a neighborhood and is in Y, then it's an E. And we're done with this direction. Okay, now just introduce combat says real quick so it's important def uh, it's important concept analysis it shows like the finiteness of infinite so we first introduce what is an open cover the open cover of a set is when a collection of open sets in x such that e is in the union right and then compact basically means Every open cover has a finite subcover. So when you have infinite sets, infinite collection of open sets that covers E, but when E is compact, that means that you can reduce to finitely many of the subcovers that covers E. And it's a really strong property. And we observed earlier that if E is a subset of Y and Y is a subset of X, and E open in Y does not imply E is open in X, but In, uh, in compact sets, when we talk about compact sets, it doesn't matter. It works around like smoothly. 
So in open sets, the openness depends on your metric space. But compact, it doesn't matter. It behaves better, and as we shall see. And that's the end of this lecture.